Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, and we are in the right place. Uh, this is Cruising with Ted, and we have our one of our live video presentations. So we want to thank you for taking the time with us today. Let me just let a few more people in, and we're going to get started here. Okay, so this is Cruising with Ted, and we have Herta Gruten, and today we have the opportunity to hear from Lynn Wilson, who's the Business Development Manager for Herta Gruten, which is a, um, an amazing cruise line. So she's going to tell you all about it. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. You can put, you can click Alt-H to get into the chat, um, and we'll take up your questions after her talk, and then after her talk, we'll tell you a little bit more about our own experience and what we can bring to the table and extra benefits that Cruising with Ted can offer you. So Lynn Wilson, please take it away. All right, let me just share my screen here. Okay, um, okay one moment here. While I commandeer control and make sure we do the correct screen, I do repel technology. I did see a comment, Kathleen, you're going on the Dual Amundsen. You better go to Fredheim. It is an amazing restaurant. My Instagram only ever comes alive when I'm on the Dual Amundsen. I love, love, love the food. It's my favorite restaurant. And Antarctica Falklands, they're already down there. So just follow along the journey as they, uh, as they conduct these early season expeditions. So my name is Lynn Wilson. Um, you can call me Lynn Lynn the Norwegian because I did grow up in Norway. I'm a love boat child. My parents worked on a cruise ship and I have been working. I've been selling her since 2016, but I have known of her for my entire life because the ships did indeed pass my house twice a day, every day as uh, on the Norwegian classic route. So I have kind of three blocks that I'd like to touch on today. Uh, I want to talk about our history. I want to talk about Norway. And then I want to talk about expedition cruising because we have different segments. But I will start by introducing our history because we are incredibly rich in history. We are not as well known in the U.S. yet, but we are very well known in Europe. And we have, in fact, been in business since 1893. We were founded in 1893 by Captain Richard Witt, featured here to the right, and he commandeered the DS Vestirolen to carry mail from Trondheim, my home city, to Hammerfest. So if you have been to Norway, you know that we have loads of fjords, bays, islands, archipelagos. It's not the easiest thing to get from one place to the next without crossing a body of water. So we quickly learned that going this route with the mail was the fastest route. And given that we are literal people, hurti translates to fast, ruten translates to route. My maiden name is Uslein. I grew up in Norway again, and I lived on the Uslein road. If your name was Landra, you lived on the Landra road. So we are just very literal people. Since the Trondheim Hammerfest route, we have later expanded this route to operate all these years later. And we still do Bergen, Kirkenes, Bergen year round on six ships. And we are still a lifeline to the Norwegian coast. So when you sail with us on this route, to the naked eye, it looks and feels just like a cruise, but just keep in mind, we are contracted with the Norwegian government to also carry cargo. We carry cars and Norwegians port to port. So that's all kind of behind the scenes, not something you'll see unless you're looking for it, but it does mean that we have to be in specific ports at specific times. And this is a popular route for folks who want to go uh, explore their Norwegian descent. And this is the most authentically Norwegian experience. It's educational. We have a three person coastal experience team on this product. We have lecture programs, Nor uh, all Norwegian staff, 80% of our food is sourced locally from the various ports of call. And every Norwegian knows of Hurtiruten. So essentially, we still, all these years, years later, we have three classics. You can go Bergen, Kirkenes, Bergen, and you will hit 34 ports of call sailing north, 34 ports of call sailing south. And I know it sounds wild, but we have perfected, you know, some of these stops will be 15 minutes. Some stops are a few hours. So you'll average a few hours off the ship a day. You might ask, why should you do the full north and southbound if you're going to hit the same ports? The answer to that is that you hit those ports at different times. So sailing north, any port that you cross in the middle of the night, chances are good you'll see those during the daytime sailing south. So we have three classics that are all going to follow the same itinerary, Bergen to Kirkenes and Kirkenes to Bergen. You can do a 12-day round trip. 
seven days from Bergen to Kirkenes, or you can hop off in Kirkenes, hop on in Kirkenes and sail south to Bergen. We have operations year round, all of our ships. Uh, we have six ships that we sell in the US market and they're all similar size. They all have the same food program, same schedule. So essentially you just pick a date and that will determine what ship you will be on. This is our history. So again, 129 years. We do have some special itineraries that I will touch on for our 100 30th anniversary on the MS Trollfjord. And starting in the summer from June to September, we have this awesome, awesome itinerary. It's called the Svalbard Express. It's going to take you from Bergen all the way up to the North Cape over to Svalbard. This is an archipelago that is only a scant 800 and some change miles from the North Pole. There are more polar bears than people in the Svalbard archipelago. The other, there's a differentiating factor on this itinerary as well. For the 34 ports of call, we're contracted with the government. Sometimes we don't have a long time in port. This itinerary, which is a summer midnight sun itinerary, is fjord rich. It is a commercial product. So we still have all Norwegian staff. We still have 80% of our food source locally from the various ports of call. We're going to have a five person coastal experience team, but we will average half to a full day in these various ports. And keep in mind, we have been doing this for so long. We are so well established in Norway. So there's lots of hidden gems of Norway that other operators just wouldn't call upon. So if you are looking for the most authentically Norwegian experience, Hurtiruten should be at the forefront. So this is going to be launched on the Trollfjord. She's going in for full refurbishment next year. This will be between June and September. You can either do a full 16 day or you can break it up, either do a northbound 10 day or a northbound or a southbound 10 day as well. In the winter, we're gonna shift gears and we are gonna go to uh, just stick to Norway and check out this itinerary. The first one will start in Bergen, go all the way up to Holmningsvog, which is the jump off point for the North Cape. The North Cape is considered to be uh, Europe's northernmost point on, of mainland Europe. Uh, it's riddled with bucket list items. You're crossing the Arctic Circle. You're getting to the North Cape and Northern Norway between September and March. What are we known for? Northern lights. Why do you want to experience Northern lights on a ship? Because there's less light pollution. You, if there's cloud cover, you're sailing past it. You have the five person coastal experience team. We're going to have a lecture program. We're going to have photography tips on, on uh, Northern lights on this route. And just if you really are interested in Norway, we cover well over 90% of the Norwegian coastline. And we're going to some of these ports only have 2000 inhabitants on the Svalbard Express. We go to Urke, there's only 40 inhabitants. So we're talking authentic, immersive Norwegian experience on either of these two products. We have hotels packaged in for both of these products, but we're super excited. So I just wanted to call attention to these uh, these itineraries along the Norwegian coast before we delve into expedition travel, which is our other side. So we have our Norway operations and then we have our Hurtigruten Expeditions Company. So even though we have been in Norway since 1893, we are so much more. I think we're second most known for Antarctica. We've been there for 20 years, but we have over 150 itineraries that span five continents. So we're all over the place. A lot of times on the expedition side, we're chasing summer. So right now we have three vessels in the Antarctic region. They are there until March in conjunction with the Austral spring and summer. So we're there for the Antarctic summer. When that season is over and the, the summer returns to the Arctic, we're going to come back north. We're going to do Iceland circumnavigations. We're going to do Svalbard circumnavigations, again, less than a thousand miles from the North Pole. We do the Aleutian Islands. We do Southeast Alaska. We have the Northwest Passage. We're in Galapagos year round on a 90 passenger vessel. So there's something for everyone. But before we even delve into that, why expedition cruising and what is expedition cruising? So, you know, historically and traditionally speaking, we have the big white ships, you know, ships that will take thousands 
of guests. So right then in their expedition cruising, it's smaller ships, and oftentimes it is to very remote regions with little to no human infrastructure. So we're not going to places that are known for having piers. You're not actually physically walking off the ship and into port to walk around. Uh, so I would say if you are considering an expedition cruise, the best favor you could do for yourself is to keep an open mind. We are experiencing mother nature on her own terms. So she controls the name of the game. We guarantee an action packed adventure, but you have to keep an open mind. We're not gonna tell you that, okay, at nine, we're gonna be here, 10, we're gonna be here. We're probably gonna give you a block of five days, especially for Antarctica. And just rest assured, we have a plan A, plan B, plan C. The other aspect or the other element of expedition cruising and how it differs from traditional cruising is that we're going to take the casino, we're going to get rid of that, we're going to get rid of the late night entertainment, you know, the, unless I'm on board because I might scurry up a dance party here and there, but, you know, usually there's a heavy focus on education over the traditional entertainment. So we are going to entertain your minds with knowledge. So we have robust lecture programs. And again, this is the best way if you are going to Antarctica, or if you're going to Svalbard, or if you're going to the Aleutian Islands, chances are you have to do it with an expedition ship that's actually built for expeditions. Lots of players out there. Why would you choose Hürtgeruten? And there's a reason I leaned on the fact that we've been in business since 1893. We have decades upon decades upon decades of in-house know-how. We've been sailing the polar regions for so long. We had our first expedition to Svalbard in 1896. So this is nothing new to us. Antarctica, we have 20 years under our belt. But the other leading quality that we do really well is sustainability it factors into all of our operational decisions. So when, if you want to travel with meaning, with purpose, you want to travel responsibly and not leave a negative impact, Hürtgeruten should be at the forefront of your searches because we really do everything we can to operate as sustainably as possible. All of our ships, again, any expedition ship is going to be smaller. It's gonna be capped out with fewer guests, but our ships are built, they are purpose-built for expedition operations. And we can go where larger ships can't go. Finally, as I mentioned to begin here, I'm gonna slate us as a culinary experience because whenever, wherever possible, we can, we source food locally and uh, Rual Amundsen in particular with Fredheim and Auna and Lindström, it is my favorite restaurants to go to. So usually when I sail, I, I love the destinations, but I love the food equally. So let's shift gears. I want to talk more about sustainability because really that is our why. And it truly, truly is in our DNA. We were the first major travel, adventure travel company to ban all non-essential single-use plastic fleet wide. And I think we've all seen the whales that have been sliced open after they pass and they're full of plastic. We've seen the straws up the turtle nose. We've seen the six-pack rings around the bird neck or maybe it's distorted a turtle shell we don't want to contribute to that so we banned all single-use plastic we invest heavily in green tech the ms rual amundsen she is the first hybrid electric vessel in the industry hot on our heels came the Frithjof nansen she is a twin ship also hybrid electric we have our german vessel the otto Sveidrup. so she in part runs on biofuels from food waste and we're actively re retrofitting our Norwegian ship fleet as well to also be hybrid powered. So we're, we aim to have our first zero emissions ship by 2030. And we're not just talking about it, we're actually heavily investing in these, these efforts here. We also have a green stay program. So every day you opt out of having your stateroom cleaned, we will donate 50 euro cents to the Hürtgeruten Foundation. Now this foundation basically exists to fund eco sustainable projects and to better society, better climate change and such. And you might say that, okay, well, 50 euro cents, that's not a lot, but I will say that small changes can have a big impact. Fleet wide, we can raise usually between 10 and $20,000 a month simply by opting out of having your stateroom cleaned every day. There's no pressure to participate in this, but we do find that folks who choose us tend to be change agents or environmental ambassadors. So that's just something to think about. 
One of my favorite activities that we do are beach cleanups. Uh, one thing that occurs in these uninhabited places we go to, this is Chuginadak Island, and that's me a few months ago uh, from the Dual Amundsen. Also, I'll just digress. This was a plan B landing that we weren't even supposed to go here, but weather said, you know, contradicted a former landing, so we came here. Beautiful black sandy beaches full of trash. We found a computer monitor. We found boots, nets, ropes. So we didn't even talk about it. We just all got to work and collectively we cleared about 300 kilos of waste, brought it back to the ship, properly, you know, recycled it and disposed of it while we, when we got back to port. So we do try to leave places in a better shape than we find them. And fleet wide, we do collect several metric tons of waste every year. So I hope you feel the passion in our sustainability efforts. It's a big part of the why Herkirutin for us. Our expedition team is also superb. So if you are considering an expedition, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you're probably a seeker of knowledge. You want to learn. Our expedition team members are handpicked according to their skill set and the destination. All of the ologists are on the roster. We have glaciologists, ornithologists, geologists, biologists. We'll have naturalists. We'll have photographers on board. And we do handpick some expedition team members according to specific skills. We brought on a historian who had a, had a focus on uh, the Aleutian Islands and the Unungan people. Her name is Mila. So she was on our Alaska expedition. When I went to Greenland, Northeast Greenland, it's uninhabited. The only people who are there is a Danish sled patrol. So we had Marius back in 2016, and he was a former Danish sled patrolman. Up in the right-hand corner here, you have Luciano. He is a Chilean naturalist. On the Dual Amundsen, they just sailed down the entire Chilean coast and through the Chilean fjords. So he was naturally in his element there. So these are highly educated science professionals, many of whom are in their second careers. They love talking about their craft and their, their respective fields of expertise. So you will gravitate towards the expedition team members. They are arguably the best part about our product. And we are also highly trained in polar survival. So that is very important when you're in places such as Antarctica that takes two sea days to get there. Or if you're in Svalbard, a scant 800 miles from the North Pole, or if you're in the outer chain of the Aleutian Islands. So it makes a difference. All right, a day in the life on board. This is how we entertain you. We're going to entertain your minds with in-depth lectures pertaining to the destination at hand. So if you're in Alaska, you're gonna talk about salmon, you're gonna talk about bears, you're gonna talk about fjords. In Antarctica, we're gonna talk about albatross, penguins, we're gonna talk about citizen science. There's many opportunities to engage with the expedition team all throughout, whether it's oh, in yeah, our yeah. science center. Yeah. Interesting. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll just keep, you might wanna mute yourself. Video. Yeah, Someone's I'll, I'll not take care you. of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we also have an introductory photo lecture, and it's not just for, you know, the massive cameras and the hardcore photographers, but also people like myself who just come with an iPhone. So we had an iPhone photo lecture on our most recent expedition. So there's something for everyone. Uh, State-of-the-art science center too, which I'll show you a photo of here in a little bit. And uh, we participate in citizen science programs. This is awesome because this is where you connect with your inner researcher. So these are all third party organizations that we collect data for. Sometimes we'll bring researchers with us on some of our expeditions too, so they can conduct their own research. But I'll give the most common example would be happy whale. In Antarctica, whales come in droves for the Antarctic summer to harvest the krill. And they're not scared. We're never gonna approach one directly, but they're quite common. They, you can see them quite frequently throughout the Antarctic season. So when they come up for air, they're bobbing, they're bobbing. Right before they do the deep dive, they're gonna show you their whale fluke. And what are we as humans going to do if we see a whale fluke? We are gonna go absolutely bonkers. We're all gonna rush to the side and we're gonna go click, 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 click. And we're gonna try to get that photo of that whale fluke. The pigmentation, the shape of it all, that is a unique identifying factor of that whale. Upload that photo to Happy Whale, that helps that organization track the migratory patterns. If the whale has not previously been recorded, you will have the opportunity to name the whale. 
So this is just a not so great iPhone picture, but this is from an ice cruising session in Antarctica. You can see the pigment of it. There were many other in my many others in my zodiac who got an adequate photo better than mine, but you can see wildlife sightings in Antarctica and also why we want to upload these photos to Happy Will. But yeah, it was a very, very special day. And I know other people got a much better photo than I did. If you want to meet the fleet, we are a larger operator. I will slate the three ships to the left, the MS Frithjof Nansen, the MS Rual Amundsen, and the MS Fram. I call them our summer chasers because wherever summer is, that's where they typically are. The Frithjof Nansen is an, in Antarctica until March, and then she'll do Iceland and Greenland. Rual Amundsen is in Antarctica plus Falklands, and she'll do a few Antarctic circle crossings as well this season. And then she will go to Alaska. And the MS Fram, she will deviate to Iceland, and she'll do some Faroe, uh, some island hopping itineraries, and then she'll end up in Svalbard for the summer. MS Spitzbergen, she is named after the island Spitzbergen, which is German for pointy mountains. Spitzbergen is the largest island in the Svalbard archipelago. So it goes without saying that she lives in Svalbard in the summer time frame, and she will do West Africa in the winter between October and January. The MS Maud will stay in the Arctic. So she does Norway expedition, Iceland, Greenland, and Svalbard. And then we finally have the Santa Cruz II. She is our 90 passenger vessel in Galapagos. And we do have four itineraries there that we operate year round. We've partnered with Metropolitan Touring and they have been in Galapagos for 65 years. So any of our products, we have a rich history and legacy. For expedition travel, and then this is again for, this is not the Norway side of things, there's different inclusions, but all the price you see, that is your price, port charges, taxes and fees are included. All of your meals, so breakfast, lunch and dinner is included in your fare. With lunch and dinner, house beer and wine is included in the restaurants. No gratuities are expected. All of the lectures, landings, ice cruising, scenic cruising is included. And in areas where we do have human infrastructure, if we are in communities and we can partner with a third party vendor, we will also include one included activity per day. For Antarctica, there's no third party. So your day-to-day -day will be your landings and your ice cruising. And then there's going to be some optional excursions such as kayaking, snowshoeing and camping that I will get into. I would slate us again as a culinary experience. Again, my Instagram only become, it only ever goes live when I'm on board and I'm enjoying the culinary delights that we have. Uh, Rual Amundsen is probably my favorite ship. I've sailed on her a few times now and every time uh, they know me a little too well in the restaurants, they know what I drink, they know what I'm gonna order. So um, yes, I would 100% slate us as a culinary experience. We do a fantastic job. So if you are a foodie, look no further. Staterooms and suites. So Kathleen, I don't know what cabin category you have, but the one to the right here, that is a, uh, this is gonna be either an RS or an RR. So this is the polar outside category. You, the smallest one will be 183 square feet, but usually they run 200 to 250 square feet. The Arctic superiors with balconies are over here on this side and 50% of the staterooms and suites will have balconies on the Frithjof Nansen and the Rual Amundsen. We also have well-appointed suites. This is an ME suite. This is the intro suite, but we have corner suites that have jacuzzis. We have an owner suite that has private balcony and a fireplace, you know, so it's very, very well-appointed and the entire ships are just absolutely stunning as well. Lynn, Kathleen is on the polar outside. Oh, lovely. Yes. So polar outside, this would be this one. And I actually will share some videos with Ted. I've stayed in two polar outsides, one double occupancy and one quad. And I do have cabin walkthroughs that has the information with the number of um, outlets and such as well. So I will make sure that I get that over so you can see what awaits. And Kathleen right. wonders if it's possible to upgrade. Yes, you can uh, You can call in to upgrade or you can ask for an upgrade on board as well. I don't have the prices handy, so that would have to be called in to find out. But yes, it should be possible to upgrade, not without issue. Um, and then we have the onboard amenities here. In addition to the ships being 
built for expedition. They're also built for your comfort. So the way I view it, your cabin is essentially your bedroom. I hope you don't spend a ton of time in your cabin because then I feel like we've sold you the wrong cruise. We have beautiful panorama lounges, 180 degrees. I think the lasting memory I have is we were leaving Dutch Harbor in Alaska and about 30 to 50 humpbacks just started breaching and smacking and they were just all over the place. And we were sitting there enjoying a nice glass of wine in the evening, just watching it all unfold or the porpoises will chase the ship along too. So you have wonderful opportunities to just take in the wildlife. Sometimes we'll have gatherings in the Explorer Lounge, but very comfortable. You can, and it's also anything with her to do I would kind of say we're kind of a quiet experience. It's not loud and ruckusy. It's pretty, unless I'm on board, in which case all bets are off. It's probably gonna be loud, but in a normal day, when Lynn Wilson is at home, it's usually pretty quiet and relaxed. All of our ships have lecture halls, again, because the focus is indeed on education. This is the Science Center, the bottom middle here. And then one of our microscopes is actually set up. It's hooked up to the computer. And we have a really fun program that we offer whenever we can. It's called the Science Boat, where we will take you out in uh, a Zodiac with the science coordinator and hopefully one of the Zodiac drivers that who is also slash biologist. We were taken out in Misty Fjords in Alaska earlier, and it was just so fun. We had the Blue Eye underwater drone. We had the Secchi disk, which we couldn't use the data, but just to uh, show how it worked essentially to track the pro productivity of plankton. And then we had the plankton net where we would take water samples and it's these water samples they bring back to the science center and then they'll have a lecture pertaining to the footage that we gathered that day. And we, this is also where they have the bone clones and everything. All of our ships have jacuzzis and the two hybrid electric vessels do have uh, infinity pools. I have tested both for quality assurance. They are both quite nice. Uh, the dessert buffet, very lethal. So we do have a fitness center on board as well to work off those calories because I don't know about you, I just don't have the discipline. There's a whole wide array of desserts that just have my name on it. And on the Dual Amundsen and the Frithjof of Nansen, there is a running track. It's a 150 meter running track on deck 11. And there's some equipment there that you can use your own body weight to exercise if you are into exercise. No dress code on any of our ships. So you can just dress practically and comfortably. The only tuxedos we see are on the penguins. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about gear. The first thing, and then I will just like make a little mention that the Galapagos is kind of the exception here. So we don't have boots in Galapagos, but boots will be issued usually on day two or so. They might call you by deck and you find your size. We have sizes European, 35 through 49. And I think that's four through 15. So there's ample sizes for everyone. Very comfortable boots. They usually come to knee high. I think they have some with the wider calf as well. Uh, and the reason is this is what we call a wet landing. And I'll show this further in a different slide. But this, we're going where there's no human infrastructure. So therefore we have to get you ashore somehow. And we provide the boots. We also have very strict biosecurity processes for Antarctica. So we do scrub boots before we, we uh, sanitize them before going ashore. So we're not going to ruin your boots with whatever solvent we use to clean our boots. Cause we don't wanna bring any foreign agents ashore on any of the landing sites because we don't want to disturb the delicate biosphere. On most of our expeditions, save for Galapagos, everybody will be given a wind and water resistant jacket. Trekking poles, we have ample pairs of those on board. So just grab them at a landing site, conduct your landing, drop them off. We'll bring them back to the ship and we will sanitize them. Everyone is also given a reusable water bottle in conjunction with the single use plastics ban. And we do have water stations all throughout the ship as well. So now I'm back to the point that our ships are purpose built for expedition. And I love this photo because it shows how do we get you in the Zodiacs. This, this is an expedition. This is through and through. And some operators have that little hole on the side and then it could get a little unstable. But our tender pits are super sturdy. They fold out to sea level. And you can see that the, the Zodiac here is actually moored alongside the tender pit. So what happens is that 
the Zodiac driver will drive up the boat. They will tie off to the tender pit, very, very sturdy. And then we will have at least one staffer on the tender pit. And then as the boat comes in, another staffer will hop into the Zodiac. They will do the sailor's grip. They're going to help you into the Zodiac. So one person on the tender pit, one person in the boat to help you in. And then you basically sit down and you slide to your respective seat. So this is how we get you ashore. And I want, I love to show this depiction because I, I someone said, if you can get in and out of a bathtub without, uh, with relative ease, you can get in and out of Zodiac. And I think that's a great uh, analogy there. So, but I just wanted you guys to see that this is how our ships are built and it factors into all of our operational decisions because we want it to be as safe as possible. And then again, we have different types of landings. Again, this is your pier because there is no pier. Nobody lives here. So, and, and also keep in mind that no two itineraries, no two departures are the same. Every landing is like a fingerprint because you know it's all dependent on conditions. This is a calm, wet landing. So they're just helping folks ashore. If there's a little bit more swell, our expedition team members are kitted with full water uh, dry suits. So they'll, they, they can be up to waist high in the water. They will steady the Zodiac so that you can basically spin around, hop off, conduct your landing. So the expedition leader is going to be ashore and he will basically advise how long you will have ashore. Sometimes we go places where we have a dock. And again, did I mention we are literal people? So wet landings, you might have to step into a little bit of water, self-explanatory dry landings. We have a dock, you're not gonna be stepping into water, you're stepping onto a dry dock. So this could be indicative of Iceland or Greenland, for example. In Antarctica, early season, polar landings. Why? Because maybe the snow has not receded sufficiently to access the beaches. So we will connect with our inner carpenters and we will build you a polar staircase. And then once you pass that, you have your full on landing site. So adventure, adventure, adventure. It is awesome. So that's the landing side. This is boots on the ground. Antarctica is the seventh continent. It's a big bucket list item. What about the other included activity? Ice cruising. Remember the whale fluke. This is equally as important as landings. This is where you can get closer within a safe distance, of course, to icebergs. You can see the different blues that, that delineate the, that show the, uh, the age of the ice. You can see the aquatic penguins. They're very fast. They're swimming all over. If, if you're in areas with sea ice, you know, just uh, sea ice floating around, this is where seals like to sleep. So you can just cruise right on past. And again, there are whales, whales, whales in Antarctica. So Ice cruising is a wonderful way to get around and see what else Antarctica has to offer. And when we're not in Antarctica, we call it scenic cruising. So this is from my expedition uh, that was from Nome, Aleutian Islands, down to Vancouver via Southeast Alaska. And we stopped by the Katmai National Park. This is Geographic Harbor one of the most stunningly beautiful places I have ever been. And this is arguably my favorite expedition to date. And I've done a few now, but we saw upwards of 20 bears that day. And while we never disturbed them in their natural habitat, we kept a respectful distance, but this is the closest I've ever been to brown bears. I saw bear cubs and it was just the most magical day on any expedition that I've ever been on. Our expeditions also include community visits to remote villages, remote communities. I went to Itokotormit in Northeast Greenland. It's just this tiny little village with 400 people. And it, you know, they're largely ice locked in the winter. So, you know, vastly different culture. We like to say we arrive as guests, we leave as friends, we celebrate their culture whenever, wherever possible. If we can partner with them to run excursions, we make sure that the money gets injected directly into their community and not go off to some third party. So this is a, another important part in the immersive experiences that we provide on expeditions. Of course, Kathleen, you're going to Antarctica to see the penguins. So this is what a landing would look like in Antarctica. Very important expectation. We set, we keep a minimum of a five meter distance from wildlife because we are visitors on their turf. So we're very strict about that. And you can see that we have little flags that are lined up. It's a little hard to see because you see all the jackets, but we, the expedition team has already come ashore before you come and they have set up the landing site. 
We're not gonna mess with these penguin highways that you'll see over to the right here. These penguins and their stubby little legs have worked hard to create that penguin highway, so we will not disturb it. But even within five meters, even with your iPhone, you're you're watching the, the mating cycle. You're watching the penguin chicks. You're walk, watching the penguin play. It's it's close enough and it's just awe inspiring. Um, come back uh, and tell me about the smell though. Uh, that's an interesting aspect of it all. But this is again, the highlight. This is the why we go. Hack your swimwear because whenever, wherever possible, we do offer the polar plunge. I have plunged in the Arctic and I have plunged in Antarctica. I don't know if we're a little bit sadistic because we do actually make you go ashore, de-rope and then jump in, then come back, then re-rope and then go back to the ship. But I feel like you work a little harder for it and it's no other excuse. And if you don't do the polar plunge, let me refer back to the sauna, the pool, and the hot tubs. So definitely whatever you do, bring your swimwear. So all of that that we just discussed, that's all included with expeditions. In addition to the included activities, we do offer optional excursions. And I mentioned in Antarctica, kayaking, snowshoeing, and camping are the three activities that we would offer. We put those on, but it's a lot more work. So that's why there is a charge associated with it. These are not pre-bookable, again, because we are experiencing Mother Nature on her own terms. So you will book this on board and they will announce when these activities occur. And I also want to set realistic expectations regarding camping because that is usually a lottery basis because there's up to 30 people, I believe, can participate in camping. And if there is a higher demand than that, then it would be on a lottery basis. So I just want to set that expectation. So again, we're more than Norway. We are more than Antarctica. We have Greenland, Iceland, Northwest Passage, Galapagos. If you are a world cruiser or grand cruiser, we have pole to pole. So you can do it again, but do it the expedition way. So right now, the Yudual Amundsen has just completed a 93-day pole to pole. They started August 8th in Vancouver. Vancouver to Nome, Nome to Halifax, Halifax to Boston, Boston to Miami, Miami to Cologne, Cologne to Valparaiso, Valparaiso all the way down to Antarctica and then ended in Ushuaia. And then they flew back to Buenos Aires. So if you are interested in pole to pole, we have it the sustainable expeditionary way. Alaska, we go there from May through August. So again, if you have been to Alaska before and but you've not done the Aleutian Islands, come back because it is so much fun. We had wet landings, we had scenic cruising, we had hikes through state historical parks. It was just so wonderfully varied. So it is 100% worth looking into and going back. We just discussed Antarctica. We'll have three ships again, the Fritjof Nansen, Rual Amundsen, MS Fram. The Nansen will do a 12 day highlights peninsula trip. So that's just gonna be the peninsula and back. Uh, Kathleen is on in Antarctica and Falklands. That is a 16 day expedition that will be offered all the way up through December. And in January, she'll break to do Antarctic circle expeditions, which is 18 days. And we allot those extra days because it takes time to cross the Antarctic circle. And we don't wanna rush it. We wanna make sure we get you off the ship and that it's a, an expeditionary experience. The highest abundance of wildlife, and if you look at Ted here, he's sitting in front of all these king penguins, which are most commonly found in South Georgia. This is where you have the hundreds of thousands of breeding pairs of king penguins. Absolutely overwhelming experience. So that will be on the MS from 23 days, Falklands, South Georgia, Antarctica. If wildlife abundance is important to you, that should be the one that you're looking at. It, by the way, it's a big cleanup cleanup job at the end of the day uh, because I have all these in my house. So yes, I know. And my they wife smell. didn't really appreciate it, Lynn, when you sent these all over to us. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we love them. Yes. We also go to Galapagos. Again, we've we've acquired a stake in Metropolitan Touring. So we've we run the newly refurbished Santa Cruz 2. She is a 90 passenger vessel. So we'll have a seven day Western Galapagos, a seven day Northern Galapagos, nine day Eastern and an 11 day Western plus Northern Galapagos. So we always have good deals. We have solo traveler offers. So Galapagos is always it's another great destination to go. So I always say South Georgia and Galapagos are the most wildlife 
with abundant uh, destinations that we sail to. And we're here year round. So right now we're coming up on, we're in the colder season and we're coming in on warm season from January through, uh, January through May. Greenland, again, this is a summer destination for us. We go between June and August. And we have four ships, the Nansen, Amundsen, Fram, and Maud that will touch them in various capacities. So the Nansen will typically do the West Greenland itineraries. Maud will have some grand Greenlandic expeditions. And then the Fram and Amundsen will usually touch on her in as part of the Northwest Passage. Iceland, if you love geology, if you are a birder, if you want to try fermented shark, this would be a great place. Uh, if you're looking for northern lights in Iceland, we are not the one. I would refer you back to northern Norway, uh, but we do sail there. We have some Iceland circumnavigations that we'll do, and these are typically nine days. So great way to experience uh, Iceland from the coastline. Northwest Passage, arguably even more scant and rare than Antarctica. So Antarctica is already a bucket list destination. Northwest Passage, following in the footsteps of those great explorers, that's another huge bucket list item. So once you've done everything else, you're gonna come back for the Northwest Passage. And we just, again, crossed from Nome to Halifax in August, September. So there's only a tight window we can get through there. And they saw, many polar bears, belugas. I, I don't know if they saw narwhals, but there are narwhals there. So, and it's, it's a, just, it's you and mother nature. This is one of the most remote destinations we go to. Norway, we're there year round. We have the Bergen, Kirkenes Bergen. We have the Svalbard Express. We have the North Cape Express. And then we have Norway expeditions that will run out of Dover. So in Norway is where we are the most established. So I would hope that if you are going to Norway that you look at Hurtigruten. Svalbard again, super cool place. 2,600 people live in this place called Lungyrbyen and they're from 50 different countries and they live in extreme. So right now, I think last week, the sun set for the last time until January or February. So they are living in what we call the polar lights and the blue light right now. Between April and August, the sun doesn't set. There are more polar bears than people. You have this seed vault here. You can't leave town without your rifle because there's so many polar bears. And the people who live here are some of the happiest people ever and again there's no trees in Svalbard and it's just it's just this crazy interesting place even the Olesund is an old research town it's an old coal mining town that's now a research town with 150 inhabitants from 10 different countries running glacial and climate projects I mean it's just amazing so we'll have Spitsbergen circumnavigations and we'll have full archipelago Svalbard circumnavigations in the summertime the Americas will go there and we usually do this as part of a repositioning to Antarctica. So next year we'll have the Rual Amundsen coming down the east coast. We will have the Fritti of Nansen coming down the west coast. And these legs will also be part of our big pole to pole. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, I will just touch on current promotions uh, real quick and then we'll just start answering some questions. So Black Friday is coming. This is our largest sale of the year. Uh, Ted will have access here now on November 14th and it opens to consumers a week later. If you are listening and you are a solo traveler, we always, always, always have solo traveler offers. Every month on the first, we launch a full list of Norway coastal ones and um, expeditions. So right now I have Antarctica, I have Galapagos, I have Norway expedition. So, and this means it, it's combinable with the other offers as well. So if your couple friend, they come in, they each pay $5,000 for their cabin, then you should be coming in if it's a voyage only to pay $5,000 for your cabin. So keep it tuned to this space because again, you know, I love to see solo travelers find good deals. So I scream about it anytime I get the chance. Uh, finally, again, if you book any expedition with Cruising with Ted by November 23rd, you will receive an additional 90 euros shipboard credit per person. Um, and this, you know, goes a long way because our expeditions are decently inclusive. You don't, you won't necessarily incur much of a tab. So that 90 euros can go a long way. But that, my friends, is all I had. And I would love to answer some questions. Lynn, before we see if there's any more questions, I wanted to clue you in on some of the veterans for Hertha Group that we have today. Yeah. Oh, yes. She I love just her. returned from the Norway coast and she loved the Cape. Mark, yeah. 
is looking at the March 12th through 26th Antarctica and Falklands cruise and was hoping to, to hook up with some people here that were going on that one. I didn't see much response. Keep an eye on our Facebook group, Mark, because that's where we end up with a lot of connections. And Tariq is looking to celebrate his 40th birthday in 2024, and he'd love it to be on a Hurtigruten expedition. That would be awesome. Yes. So any and all people who want to sail with us, honestly, we do offer up a great program. And after this, I will be sending, um, make sure that you link up with Ted and his team for these video links, because what is a landing? I think that's arguably one of the most important things when considering what does a landing look like? So I documented that from start to finish. Kathleen, we will get you a polar outside cabin walkthrough. It's on the Dualamans, and so it's the same ship. So that will give you a great idea of what you are should expect. We have a ship walkthrough video. And then I also have another video that I scoured and found on YouTube on the old Midnight Soul days from 2019. Uh, it's called two whales in one day where a minky whale and a humpback whale were just coming around to just we couldn't we had to cease operations because they were just nudging on the zodiacs and they were just playing around and we just had to like wait until they were done with us and then we resume operations. I would also like to give another example of what we have done on a MS Fram um, expedition, for example, Karin Strun, she held a webinar. She's the godmother of the Duel Amundsen and uh, she's chief expedition leader. But essentially they saw a pod of orcas and there was a bunch of sea ice and there was a seal on the sea ice and there was a baby orca. So they basically were teaching the baby how to create waves to knock the seal off the sea ice. So what the captain did that was the name of the game. That day, they stopped the ship for like an hour, 90 minutes, and they just watched this Darwinism just unfold. And essentially, that is the essence of a Herkirutan expedition. So whatever you do, keep an open mind, expect the unexpected, and embrace it. If you do that, you're going to have the best time. Lynn, one more question has popped up from Kathleen. Yep. Do we get the jacket when we get aboard the ship? I'm working on my luggage weight. If we plan, if we get them in BA, I'll have to plan for weight. Okay, so that happens usually upon embarkation. So that would be in your case in Ushuaia. Uh, so you board the ship, you get your jacket at that time. But keep in mind, you have the charter back to Buenos Aires. So uh, don't overpack. I made it to Antarctica and I made it on an 18 day Alaska expedition with carry on. I mean, granted, I look like a burglar with my black on black on black cruise or like a clothing. It was, I didn't have much color to speak of, but uh, keep in mind, you're going to cross the Drake passage uh, and you're going to find that you wear the same couple of outfits. So what you want to do, you want to layer, just bring, I would gloves. I would bring like two pairs of everything in case you get, you know, when you get off the ship twice and if your stuff is wet from the first time, just switch, but don't, you don't have to overpack whatever you do. I think you can easily stay within the 23 kilo guideline for the charter flight times. And I'll also say in regards to the charter flight times, there is a kiosk at the hotel when you get there, that is where you will be given your charter flight times, uh, as well as the instructions on where to bring your luggage and such as well. Good. And I believe, I don't think my screen is sharing. Ted, you're sharing your screen. So I put, I'll put that on to where I can see. Sorry? So now we'll go on to Ted. No more yes. questions have popped up, so. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Mary Pat. And that's her email, by the way, if you want to reach out to her. Um, she she lives in Florida. She's been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man, basically is her theme. So thank you for coming today. You'll see that little welcome sign at the at the captain's welcome event, which uh, happens on every Herta Gruten ship. So um, the captain comes out, welcomes everybody aboard. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great life on board. You get to know everybody. It's a really close-knit team, right, uh, Lynn? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And honestly, they make they make the experience. Honestly, that's just I love them. I mean, I track them on Facebook. We all keep in touch. You know, they are always open to answer any questions and they just love what they do as well. So, yes, I'm and I, I'm very excited. I am just talking about it. I want to go back now. <laughs> OK, so anyway, welcome aboard, everybody today. My name's uh, well, Ted Krabowski, but I go by Cruising with Ted or CruisingWithTed.com. 
Um, so I'm glad, so glad that you made it with us today and are sharing the time. We're just going to spend a few more minutes telling you more about ourselves, a little bit more about what what's life like on this ship. Um, you know, we've successfully helped tens of thousands of travelers. We have like a half a dozen agents uh, splattered around the country, around this country, that are uh, have over 25 years average experience to help you. So we're certainly, you know, in, in the market uh, to help you. Um, we deal in small ship cruising. So whether it be um, expedition, uh, river cruises, uh, yacht cruises, uh, small ship ocean cruises. Um, and we also do la land vacation as well. So that's that's our specialty. That's what we do. OK, so wherever you're going, whatever the far reaches of the world are, um, we're there to help you out. Um, and, you know. So whatever you're planning, a small ship cruise vacation, airline reservations, boutique hotels, unique destination tours and excursions, um, you know, we're, we're definitely experienced and have well, well seasoned to assist you. Um, we do we do have a big presence on social media. Um, we have a Facebook page there called Cruising with Ted. We, we actually have over 23 travel Facebook groups. Uh, and this and and one of the groups that we have of the 23, which by the way we have over 47,000 followers on Facebook, between our Facebook groups and our Facebook page and so forth. Um, you can join our Facebook group for Herder Gruten if you haven't already. It's called um, Herder Gruten uh, Herder Gruten Group because when you say Herder Gruten Group, what does that mean, Lynn? What does that represent? Herder Gruten Group. Herder Gruten Group. It's uh, it's a fast route group. <laughs> and and but but I mean it's also the, the different entities that you mentioned. Yeah, right? so we're under the Hurtigruten group. So you have Hurtigruten Norwegian Coastal Express, which is the Bergen Kirkenes Bergen and the North Cape Express and the Svalbard, and then you have Hurtigruten Expedition. So Hurtigruten group is the parent entity. Yes. Okay, and then it's and we we have numerous posts either on our our Facebook page or in the group. Um, this is one called Better Than a Dream. Where we talk about the Galapagos cruise. By the way, um, just mention what. What can someone get out of Galapagos cruise, particularly um, with with um, Herta Gruden? Well, it's very inclusive the way we do it. So again, I'm going to lean in on the legacy. So 97% of Galapagos is national park. And to even be able to guide in Galapagos, you have to be a licensed naturalist. So we have a full Ecuadorian team. We have licensed naturalists and it's very inclusive. So I'm gonna lean in on the know-how. They have been doing this for so long. And when you go to Galapagos, snorkeling is included, cycling is included, hiking is included. Uh, the glass bottom boats is included. The pangas, uh, the, the Ecuadorian zodiacs, that is included and it's very, active beer and wine is included with meals again and it can be from sun up to sundown you can do as much or as little as you want the other thing i would say about galapagos too it is family friendly so you know and we'll have the cabin categories the same holds true for most of our products we are family friendly so if you have kids ages i don't know eight and up you know and you really want to give them that immersive experience that's a great option with us as well but uh the food is fantastic the lecture program Program. So it is a high quality experience and it is firmly in line with who we are as a company. Thank, thank you so much. So um, yeah, we're this month we're featuring the Galapagos cruises. And um, you know, if you book by the end of the year, we're gonna have a special, extra special inclusion with that. Um, and this is um, something I wanted to tell you about. We have a website, it's called cruisingwithted.com. We do ask that you go on that website. Um, enter to get a free cruise, uh, free vacation, per perhaps. And you can also get our um, emails and promotions by clicking on that button there. So when you go into our, our website, you're going to see we we represent all the different cruise lines, including Herta Gruten. Um, and then you go in there and you can start selecting cruises and you'll see that there's an extra credit. Uh, there's an offer right there in the middle, 180 euro uh, extra cabin credit that you can use on board. For you know, extra special excursions or or things that you can you can get on board. So definitely, um, even if you're already booked, reach out to us. Uh, you know, we might still be able to help you. We we also offer travel insurance. And um, I wanted to um, is Christy there? One of our agents, yeah. Christy. Uh, mm -hmm. Christy's one of our agents out of, of New York, and um, she wanted to just speak to you a little bit about. Um, she offers. Um, she specializes in groups with Herta Gruten. And, um, she, you know, she's, she's an expedition type person herself. Why don't you tell them a little bit more about yourself and what you offer, Christy? 
Hi, everybody. Um, so I um, am located in New York and I can basically take care of anything you need. If you want to do group travel, family travel, um, I can take care of all the details from beginning to end, um, as well as give you um, quotes for travel insurance. And really, I'm here to answer any question you might have. So um, my contact information, I'll put it in the chat um, and it'll also be at the end of this presentation as well but um yeah feel free to reach out if you have any questions thank you so much uh so thank you much and lynn you did touch a, a little bit on board um i was uh, a couple years back i was on board the fram there's a picture of me there um tell us a little bit more about the the spaces in the ship like uh, what are we looking at here and that that second photo lynn the second photo there that would be, is that Ona? That might be the, the main dining restaurant for that one. So again, mm -hmm. the Fadam has actually been refurbished recently. So she also now has more of a Scandinavian design. Those staterooms are gonna be a little smaller. So we're averaging less than 200 square feet on the MS Fadam. So there is a difference in, um, in space per se on these ships because the FDOM is a 200 passenger vessel and the hybrid electrics are 500 passenger vessels. But again, she will have the main dining Ona. She will also have the 180 degree panorama lounge. We will have outdoor explore decks. We will have the gym. We will have the jacuzzis. And we do have points of interest out on deck as well on the MS FDOM. The Zodiacs on all of our ships are loaded in the inside the vessel. And then we, we we actually, the Zodiac tender pit folds up. And so other operators might stack their Zodiacs, you know, but that can take up deck space. So again, all of our ships are inside the hull. It's been a while since I've been on the FDOM, actually. I think it was 2016, the last time I was on her. So okay. I have to go back. But we have the lecture halls again. And then there is the expedition desk. And there will be the science center as well on board the MS FDOM. So most of our ships have the same, uh, you know, the panorama lounge, the science center, the restaurants, and we try to follow the same model. Okay. Then and one, one more. Oh, has, um, Barb has posted that she's going to Antarctica with five friends on January 7th. Lovely. All right. So I went January 6th this year and it was awesome. I saw Gen 2 penguin chicks. We saw, I wasn't expecting to see as many whales as we did. We saw so many humpbacks because usually uh, the whale season is, you know, it's the most prevalent in February. But yeah, January is a great time. Longest days, warmest temperatures. So that is, uh, that was a great time to go. Which one would that be on? Is that on the Friti of Nansen or are you going with us? Or are you going with someone else? Let me see. Which departure is that? We have January 7th, we have a departure on the Friti of Nansen. And January 7th, we have a departure on the Fram. Are you going with us? I wonder. Yes, you're going with um, Herta Gruten, she yeah. said. Lovely. What ship? The Fram or the Nansen? Uh, we're not sure on that, but do um, you notice there's a picture of Nansen. serving hot, hot? Oh, you got it, Mary Pat? Yes. yes. Okay. So you have a standing order to go to Fredheim. And I don't know if you partake in dairy. I don't, but I have. It's been rumored that we do have the best milkshakes in town too. So I can't really tolerate dairy much. So I haven't been able to verify. But lots of people would show up and do. They would come back after their full meal for milkshakes all the time as well. But yes, best hot dog, best quesadillas, best everything. I would just eat there. I booked all of my meals <laughs> so that I wouldn't lose any spaces. But and yeah. We, and, I'm we're Go showing ahead. hot drinks of being served on board. What's that all about, Lynn? Hot drinks? Uh, well, that's coffee, tea, hot chocolate throughout. That is available throughout your expedition. There are coffee stations. And um, yeah, sometimes out on deck, they'll have points of interest out on deck as well. So that's and the food, the food is wonderful. The ships, like you say, like the Fram was recently upgraded. So the ships are, are beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually works of art. You, you know, I thought, I thought, uh, it would be quite industrial on board, but that's not the case. They're beautiful. They beautiful are. Designs. And you're going to feel underdressed, especially when you get on the nuns and you're like, okay, wait a minute. It looks, it looks luxury when you get on board and then you're like, can I wear my sweatpants around here? And then, but there is no dress code. So I confirm you can definitely 
go ahead and wear whatever it is that you want. Also, if you start your expedition in jeans, just from the wonderful food, you may or may not end in your sweatpants. Anyways, that's usually how my expeditions will end. I just skate out with the uh, flexible clothing at the end of it all. <laughs> okay, we're just going to cover a couple more things here. We got Ted's top 10 Hertegruten tips. Okay, so we're going to um, go over these uh, one by one. Um, stay up after bedtime. So, you know, you have the tilts of the earth, uh, the Norway experience, eye-catching phenomena. Have you seen the Northern Lights yourself, Lynn? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So these aren't just Photoshop pictures that we're watching. No. Uh, for the Norway cruises, if you do Bergen, Kirkenes, Bergen between October 1st and March 31st, or if you do any of the North Cape Express full cruises, they carry the Northern Lights promise, meaning if there are no occurrences, read the fine print. If there are no occurrences, not if you don't see them, but <laughs> if there are no occurrences, then you're given a free cruise the following season. I'm just going to call that. a spade a spade and say we don't want to give away free cruises, so we're, pro we're pretty solid that they're going to occur. Her. and they the shows we have seen so far this year just epic it is the norm not the exception okay so you know but don't don't miss that miss out on that by by sleeping the whole time and staying in your room no all right keep your right. monitor your uh, intercom on they will announce it and some of the best friendships are formed out on deck at 3 a.m in pajamas that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> Okay. And you really only need to bring two or three pairs of shoes. You don't need dancing shoes. Um, how do you get these boots, Lynn? They will call you down either by boat group number or by deck number. So once you're on board, we have our tender pit area where we store all of our boots. We sanitize them. So they will be issued in the very beginning of your expedition. You hang on to the boots and then you know, usually on a sea day back to port, you will go ahead and give the boots back to the expedition team to clean. So you really only need one or two walking shoes and maybe some mm -hmm. sandals for the showers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I brought, what did I bring? I brought my, uh, I traveled in my sneakers, which also double as uh -huh. my exercise shoes. Uh -huh. And then I brought flip-flops. Yes, I brought flip-flops to Antarctica because I did. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to wear them, but I just, I live in North Carolina. I have my flip-flops go where I go. <laughs> So, so, you know, get out of your show, get out there, like uh, Lynn mentioned, and, and, and see the sites. So if I ever had somebody come back, I had somebody, you know, if they came back from Hurtigan Cruise and said nothing happened, there wasn't anything to see, you pretty much know that they didn't leave their cabin, right? Yes, I would. Kind of that dumb. is, you definitely, the cabin, you are, that is for, you face plant at the end of the day. That's your cabin, but the ship is built for your comfort. So I hope you utilize it and, and take, you know, make use of the spaces that were built for you. <laughs> okay. Number four, uh, a good pair of binoculars is recommended. Yes. Yes. Uh, particularly in Svalbard, we're not going to ever approach wildlife. So, and you don't ever want to be close to a polar bear anyways, and it is illegal to seek them out. So you definitely want a good pair of binoculars and you can rent them on board as well. And enjoy the local cuisine. You know, there's a breakfast uh, buffet that's well stocked. Uh, very healthy meals, lunch op options, dinners or buffets and set menus. So you're, you're experiencing local cuisine, correct? Yes, yes. That's particularly true for Norway, up to 80%. So if you do go to Norway, try the brunost, the brown cheese and waffles. That is a must. That is the very Norwegian thing to do. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, we successfully assisted uh, tens of thousands of people with their cruises. So we're definitely here to help you. Let me just go. I think I skipped a slide here. Hold on one second. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave our information up here for you. Um, Mary Pat, did you want to remind them of anything else or anything else to cover? Give us a call if you um, have any questions. Oh. If you're looking for cruises. Other than that, it's been great having everybody here. And I really enjoy everybody's um, interaction on the Facebook group. Okay. Oh, oh we have a question here on the Drake crossing. Ha ha. Okay. So oh. you're either going to get the Drake shake or the Drake lake. There's no predicting it, but if there is a Drake shake, you do get a certificate. It is part of the experience. Yes. Have I been seasick? Yes, I have, but oh. you get to your destination and it's a forgotten memory turns into a joke and a warm story to tell your friends when you come home. So hit or miss, just bring your seasickness remedies. 
Okay, and then I, I missed some of these uh, slides here. So bring warm clothing or layering. So yes. um, you don't have to layer, but it is recommended. Um, and, you know, you can look that up on what that is or just bring warm clothing overall. Correct, Lynn? Yes. And then the outer layers, don't bring a ton of outer layers. You're going to reuse the same thing. This is not a fashion contest. We don't care what you look like. You know, you just want to be warm. So we like wool, all things wool. If you have wool socks, wool scarves, wool sweaters, you know, we're all in on wool. So we do love that. Leave the formal wear behind. Men don't need tuxedos, right, Lynn? No. Uh, uh, I mean, you could, you could wear them, but I would, I'm more accustomed to seeing people in penguin onesies than I am to seeing suits. If I would, I, it would get a double take for me, but I would never judge. If you want to wear a suit, you can, but it's certainly not required for any, not even the fine dining Linsdom. So. Unless you want to fit in with the penguins. Yeah. Yeah. They might think you're one of them. <laughs> Um, a small waterproof dry bag. So on an expedition cruise, it's unpredictable. You might be at dinner and there might be a dolphin sighting or whales. So I always carry a small bag with me that contains my camera, binoculars, and a hat. You know, be, be well prepared for sighting. Um, if you have like an iPhone or something, you get these little waterproof bags you can put over. It's a really simple way to, you know, you can take such good photos with your camera now, zoom in and so forth. So, um, but just bring a, bring something waterproof like that to protect your valuables and have them ready at all time. And that's Sun also protection. appropriate for the uh, the What's Zodiacs with sea spray. You can get sea spray when you're Zodiacing ashore. So also bring rain pants and the waterproof bag is key for sure. And also sunglasses with UV protection, lip salve for UV protection, chaplets and so forth. Be prepared for that, okay? Yes, sir. Um, don't forget your bathing suit. Lynn mentioned that there are um, jacuzzis on board, which are quite warm even in the cold weather, right? Yes. And also just imagine taking and seeing whales breaching, or maybe you're in Norway under the Northern Lights. I could think of worse things to do than to sit in a jacuzzi and see the Northern Lights above my head. So whether you participate in the plunge or not, definitely bring your swimwear. It is a must. Okay. And here's some client testimonials of people that have worked with us. This is Cruising with Ted. Um, again, this is Team Ted. Um, these are our top agents here. We're always here to help and answer questions even if you're already booked on a cruise we can sell you insurance we can um you know help take over your booking services if it's been made recently so and here i am on the fram so you know in addition to our exclusive offers we're all season travelers we know what is needed and when it is needed so there are no surprises so regardless of where you are on travel planning please contact us today there's my phone number and email uh, I want to thank you so much for attending today. I, I believe, uh, Lynn, you you went beyond our expectations and in providing information. Um, I hope everybody had a great time. We are going to post this uh, video in the Facebook group and, that we mentioned, Herta Gruten Group, and also our Facebook page, Cruising with Ted. Uh, please sign up on our website. Thank you so much for attending today. And keep sailing, particularly uh, Herta Gruten. All right. Bye bye. Thank Pocket you so talk. much. Call the bra. <laughs> Have bye, a nice day. Bye. Bye. bye.